Hi, welcome to The Coaching Game. I'm Laurie Lawson, and tonight, one of my favorite guests, Sharon Saylor from Portland, Oregon, is here. And uh, boy, we are going to talk about the gamut of her career. <laughs> <laughs> She's written a fantastic book. Hold up this beautifully colored book. Um, for children, and it helps to coach children. But first, we're going to find out how this came about. Um, so I'm thrilled to have you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. And I'm so excited to share this because usually the last couple of shows I've had has been Millenniums, how to coach Millenniums. <laughs> and, how to, and it's like, you know what? This is Her book is for um, children ages three to five, and I've never heard of anybody doing that. So I'm excited about that. Oh, thank you. Me too. It's been, it's been a lot of fun to bring it about. Yeah, and, and I think when they find out the impetus for it, it's going to be even <laughs> more fun. But, but first, <laughs> now tell us a little bit about I. I I have to tell you, um, Sharon, I will tell you because she won't. She's a, she, Sharon is a world-renowned body image expert. And why do I say that? Because she said she's running through the airport and she sees her book in seven languages, maybe more now, I don't know. <laughs> so I think that requires world-renowned status. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so tell us, how, how did you get into that? And, and where, has, where has that taken you in the coaching world? Oh my gosh. Can you say just sort of serendipity, how it <laughs> happened? <laughs> oh, all of life is serendipity. <laughs> yep, I agree. Uh, 20 years ago, I was doing something completely different. And I went to a training. And lo and behold, there was a body language expert as part of this training. I was mesmerized uh, to the point of <laughs> just, you know, almost in a trance. It was so fascinating to have to hear him explain how body language worked, how it taps into our unconscious, how you can understand about what motivates people just by understanding their body language. And it, it was, he was t talking all morning, teaching all morning, and he called a break, and there were 50 people in the room. He comes up to me, and I'm one of those that sit in the back and just like, don't <laughs> notice me, I'm taking notes. Don't you know? call on me, please. E exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I'm still that to the kind of person to this day. But he came up, whispered in my ear, let's go for a walk. And oh. I was like, uh, <laughs> okay. I don't know, the first thought is like, oh, you're, you're in trouble, you know? Yeah, <laughs> what did I do wrong? <laughs> exactly, <Yeah. laughs> I was trying not to be noticed, what did I do wrong? <laughs> and we went for a walk and he proceeded to tell me like a psychic reading, like you are in the creative arts and you're going through a rough time in your life. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay, it was so accurate. And then, he walked me back and sat down, and he whispered in my ear before he left, oh, and if you'd think with your mouth closed, you'd look more intelligent. And <laughs> now most people might be insulted, but he knew just by watching me, that would hook me. I mean, that just hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> what? How did you, you know, what do you mean? So I'm going to do it. It's so embarrassing, but this is what I <laughs> was doing until I learned not to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So somebody mesmerizes me. I go, <laughs> Not too intelligent looking, right? No, it, it, but, but I, I would be grateful if some people looked at me like that. Wow. <laughs> I would like that. True, true. I guess that's a compliment. <laughs> but also from the standpoint of the person making the face, I, I, I'm grateful he told me that's what yes. I did. When I'm just mesmerized by people, I've since learned to keep my mouth closed uh, most of the time. Sometimes funny thing about body language, if, it be, if it's um, something you've done since childhood, or mm -hmm. some, you might catch yourself doing it. So every so often, if I'm mesmerized, I'll find, oh, nope. <laughs> close my mouth. <laughs> Lips <laughs> breathe, closed. Breathe <laughs> yes. And so, yeah, that's how it started. I was just hooked and mesmerized. At the time, I owned a graphic design and marketing company. And the best way to meet somebody, right, is go up and offer your services. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, you write a lot of books at the time. I think mm -hmm. he had, oh, 10 or so books out. Um, now he's got over 20. And uh, offered to, you know, hey, I do websites. I do all this kind of thing. And it started as just a relationship like that, working, helping him uh, with technology and uh, covers of his books and things like that. And pretty soon, I'm just beginning to be mentored, and he's a great men our mentor, and he's, I'm a great mm -hmm. mentee. And the next thing I know, I'm editing the books, and the next is history. He just, as I say, transferred everything he'd ever learned. It was fantastic. It was just a 
serendipitous gift. I don't know how else to explain that it. That is, I, as, as long as I've known you, I've never heard that story. Oh. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> I have, I'm so glad I asked. <laughs> well, the cool thing is, when you can find those people that mentor, I know you do a lot of mentoring mm -hmm. yourself, and that's what I love about your mentoring, because you find those people that are mentoring. That are moldable, yes, yeah. kind of, yeah. Uh, but uh. the cool thing is, as you go through that relationship now, it becomes, we're, I don't, I never look at myself with equals with him, but it becomes like, we go to breakfast sometimes and I goes, so what did you learn out there? What are you learning? Share with me <laughs> some of the things that are ahas or insights mm, you've had. Right. And it becomes now just two people sharing great insights who mm. can speak the same language. And I think both of our skill set is just exponentially grows whenever we sit down and have breakfast. Like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you're right. Yes, I just love those it. Are, those are the fun collaborations or relationships or whatever you want to call them. But I know that, it, and, and when we say, I think, w when I say body imaging, I think of one-on-one, -on -one, you know, and like, because mm -hmm. uh, even me in, in my limited, sometimes I will do that um, if I'm getting people ready for an interview, you know, and it's like how you say something and how you're standing and all that. But you do it, which I find fascinating, you do it with corporate, um, <laughs> Corporations, how do you do that? <laughs> you just go around and straighten everybody out? or <laughs> How does that work? Oh, it works in a variety of ways. The most common way is to have a training in uh, either a half day or a full day, and then breakouts, whether it's small groups or one-on-one. -on -one. It just depends mm -hmm. on the size of the group. Oftentimes, I like it when it's a small breakout because other people, I, as a body language person, might say something. Do you realize, like, like you know, the open jaw thing? <laughs> well, right. that was a great thing to learn. A Fantastic great thing, yeah. Thing yeah. But the problem was, I wasn't totally convinced because it was just him telling me. Now, the nice thing about the small breakout groups that I do, so we have a large group training, they get the gist of what we're doing, they get the feeling, they do some practice, and then in the small breakout groups, we'll do some one-on-one -on -one where when you do that, this is the image that it portrays. Is that the image you're wanting to portray? Oh, no, I was wanting to be more confident. Okay, let's try this. And then they do it, and then the rest of the group can give them feedback. Like, wow, that really worked. That's, yeah, that's nice to have, especially from your peers. It's yeah. like, because those are the people that you quite likely are going to be trying to impress or at least just work with, you know, right. <laughs> get your point across to, if nothing else. But the else. nice thing about that, too, is that they can continue to remind you down the pathway because oh. it's a new skill. And like any new skill, the more you practice it, the more it becomes natural. And oftentimes people will learn and they will find themselves in a sticky situation and they might revert to back to the, the habit, mm -hmm. not to the new skill. But when you've got some friends or co-workers who no, have learned how to give what I call feed forward from Dr. Marshall Goldsmith, which is gentle and encouraging sort of feedback. Not what is this feed forward, not feedback? <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay. <laughs> Keep you moving forward. Feed forward. forward. I'm yeah, going to give you feed forward, not back. I Dr. like that. Marshall Goldsmith. And uh, mm -hmm. what I love about that is then the group, the little group that was with you can remind you. Like, mm -hmm. oh, remember? Yes. Oh, that's right. When yeah. I when I do this, I look more confident. Thank you so much. And yeah. that helps the learning and, and really encouraging. Wow. So that's one of the ways that we work together. Another way is oftentimes when I go in, I'll shadow the whole group for a while just to get a flavor of how does the team work together. And you'll begin to see where personalities really meld and where personalities really conflict. And then you can work from there, too. It's, it's helpful to, to see it from multiple views. That's interesting. What, as, so, like, would a dynamic be um, who goes to the front and who sits in the back, like, <laughs> like oh, you and I do? And, absolutely. And Another yeah. dynamic is who finishes the other person's sentence. Uh -huh, <laughs> that <yeah>. happens a lot. <laughs> okay. Uh, who has the great ideas, but you could never speak up. Those are the people that you kind of see going, I don't know if I can do I mean, I'm exaggerating for, yeah. for the <laughs> camera, but, you know, you can kind of see them. But they never speak up. They're almost there, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and almost. giving them the courage to share their ideas, things like that. And sometimes, if the group is cohesive, it becomes like, oh, that's just Sharon. Oh, that's just Lori. And breaking out of those molds so it's not a stereotype that people can really shine. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, if we have a way of being at the beginning of the team, and then we get some training. Maybe it's one-on-one -on -one coaching like you do. I mm -hmm. do that some, but you do far more. And mm -hmm. do the one-on-one -on -one coaching. What happens is we coming as uh, we're coming now to the team as a different person because we've had some coaching. Problem is the rest of the team 
it's like yeah. keeps putting you back into the other place, you know, <laughs> the other mold. Yeah, <laughs> and then eventually it's like, all right, <laughs> you win, right. and I'll just <laughs> so yeah. So it's nice if you can if you can catch the entire group and and everybody can share in the experience. And as you said, I, I never thought about that, but the, what a great reminder! It's like, oh, remember, shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When you're or thinking, whatever. keep <laughs> your mouth closed. Yeah, yeah, no, no lips together. So I, I, I make her do this every time. What, if you had to give her like a tip, or what what are tips? Of for one-on-one, -on -one. what are, what are, what do you see that people do that um, block their message or or um, just really don't help them communicate as well as they could? What's a common thing that people do? Oh, two come to mind. Can I share two? Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first one that comes to mind, I remember a client. I coached her, oh, I don't know, 12 years ago, I think it is now. She just called me up on the phone, and she said to me, you know, Sharon, Remember that advice you gave me 12 years ago? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, yeah, I was so disappointed when you told me. <laughs> so good, thank you. But she says, you know, since then I have learned it's the best advice I ever got. And that is know how to breathe. I know it sounds crazy, but we take breathing for granted. Yes, yes. And we don't realize under stressful situations that we begin to breathe high and rapid, mm -hmm. and then our voice changes. Is there are a lot of politicians out there that you can hear when they're under any sort of stress, and that can even be the stress of public speaking. This right, is not right. like conflict type stress. It can be any stress. Mm -hmm. They tend to raise their chin, and they breathe high and rapid, mm. and I'll breathe. And you can probably hear my voice change. Yes, absolutely. It's because I'm stretching the vocal cords. Yeah, yeah. But it becomes then almost trying to get heard. It becomes more like shouting. It's That's all. And there are so many opportunities in the news today mm. to see that. So it's, I'm <laughs> definitely going to look for that. Yeah. So the key things are keep your chin parallel to the ground. Yeah. That, okay. that keeps you from doing this. <laughs> right. Or if you're shy, it keeps you from doing this. Right. Or the other one I see a lot is, and this is might sound a little gender specific, but it's not. I see mm. both genders doing it, and that's tipping the head when you're listening. So that's why I say I do that, and everybody goes stop it because it makes you look younger. It makes you look like childlike, right? right. Yeah. Well, I call it submissive. It looks. Oh, submissive. I hate that. I like childlike. <laughs> yeah, submissive is even worse. And what happens? So. That is the kind of the layer on top of that that's even worse. Mm -hmm. So we're submissive. And then how many times do we nod? Just like, I'm listening, I'm following. But what happens if the other person th is thinks you're agreeing? Oh. You're acknowledging that you're hearing. Yeah. But the other person leaves the meeting going, oh, she agreed. She you know, loved she everything. Yeah, she <laughs> loved everything. It's I get a big thing. raise. And <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I find that happens a lot. Wow. So breathe mm -hmm. low and slow and just like a baby does, you know, completely. Now, are you talking diaphragm breathing, you know, like as opposed to right. heavy duty lung breathing? Okay, right. yeah. But we don't <laughs> want to breathe so low that it just becomes almost <laughs> a, like a lethargic <laughs> breath. Yeah, you know, yeah. Not a so meditative so breath. Right, right. Not, I just call not it that deep. <laughs> right. Not that deep yeah. where we're could just be going oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, it's a it's there's a nice time and a place for that yes yeah, it's <laughs> a nice balance in between where it's full and complete so mm -hmm. it doesn't sound because if we breathe high and rapid like this uh, first of all you start to think I'm a little panicked and I start right, to almost right. get panicked and yeah. then what interesting thing happens when I start to talk like this and breathe like this is that I become an you incessant do. talker Oh, oh my goodness! Okay, it's the breathing I, keeps yeah. pace with the voice, and what happens oh. is people are just like, "Whoa, I'm exhausted <laughs> over <laughs> exactly. here." Exactly, <laughs> <laughs> and you're not getting all the air you should. So, right. All right. So, the the breathe deep and mm -hmm. and low, but not crazy like, and then head straight, and chin parallel to the ground. Yeah, and try not to nod and agree all the time, right? Well, you can nod. It's always a nice thing to know, uh, like I'm hearing you. Well, I like to do that, that if somebody's public speaking and they're nervous, and you know, and so I just go, uh huh, yeah, that's good, you're doing good. <laughs> but they have no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> but I'm, well, I'm thinking know, I'm helping. Yeah. <laughs> it, it does help. It does help. As someone that gives a lot of speeches to large groups, it's always nice. Like when I'm before, I always shake hands with as many people as I can because I want to look for people just like you. Because ah. then I know, okay, <laughs> I just faux pot up here. Where's my happy face? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be okay. Yeah. Right. It resets you when you can find those people that are really encouraging from the from the stage. You've shaken hands with them. You know them. They know your name. You know, and then they'll smile at you when you make eye contact. 
all of a sudden you can settle back down. Okay, that wasn't a fatal faux pas. We can keep going. Life, life will go on. And, and, and interestingly enough, because your book has been translated into so many languages, this, these must be universal. I mean, I know, I know cultural the differences. There are cultural differences. But this, this, this must be like almost a universal, um, I don't want to say you just said faux pas, so it's in my head, but a universal, um, you know, thing that people do, not incorrectly, but, you know, could be more powerful. Well, we can say, we'll say more powerful because yeah. there's, we do all behaviors for a reason. We've mm -hmm. learned them from childhood and they worked at one time. Sometimes right. they're not working now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time to give it up. And there are certain things we have to be very careful. I travel a lot internationally. The hand gestures, the three main hand gestures, which is the tell me more or sharing. It mm -hmm. can be the sign of friendship, the upward palm gesture. That's pretty universal. Oh, good. Okay. The other one, which is serious, and I know it sounds weird. This is not the acts that we see a lot of politicians mm -hmm. doing. No, that's yeah. that's not a nice hand gesture, by the way. <laughs> it's just a side palm gesture, like, mm -hmm. tell me more. There's okay. a little bit that happens, a bit of your voice that becomes very serious mm -hmm. when we do this gesture. It's a tell me more. Tell okay. Me yeah, more. yeah. Or it could be, yeah, no, I anything like that. But it's a mm -hmm. little more serious gesture. And then this one, the downward palm gesture, is all about not open for negotiation. So if you really, how many ah, times when yeah. you talk to our teenage yeah. kids, I said no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> now, this one I always be careful with. Keep your fingers together in certain mm. cultures. W the widespread is words we can't say on air. So really, yeah. So it's not like this. It's not a widespread <laughs> thing. It's just, just no, I said no. <laughs> <kind of thing. laughs> not open to negotiation. That's all I said. Nothing else. Exactly. <laughs> and so the ones I, where they are sort of slang, the o mm -hmm. the okay sign, the thumbs up, any of those slangs, avoid those in other cultures because you just you don't may, know. You don't yeah. know. You yeah. just don't. It's know. It's too hard to keep track. And I. Find a compatriot, someone in that culture, from that culture, that will share it with you. I was, when mm -hmm. I'm doing my traveling and, and trainings, there's always someone there that will help guide me on what is appropriate, what isn't appropriate, because it does change. And it actually changes by age, too, depending on if you've mm -hmm. got a group of millennials um, or if you've got seniors, whatever, whomever you're teaching, a lot of times body language changes with that, too. Wow. So a lot to learn. That's why you should get her book, <laughs> which is in seven languages. That's what your body says and how yes. to master the message, not Pinky oh. Chenille. <laughs> Do you never know? Pinky might, might grow up to really really get this thing down. I want, I want to definitely talk about Pinky Chenille. But tell me, I, I know you have a radio show, too, because I've been on it, and it's yes. really cool, um, called Autoimmune Hour. Tell me, what is that all about? Well, when I was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition three years ago, I, like you, just have to learn everything I can possibly yeah. learn. And one of the things I learned is how frustrating it can be to be a patient yeah. <laughs> and get <laughs> out. You know, you're, not, you're feeling bad to begin with, and so probably not uh, on all cylinders, right? right? And so your communication might be a little bit tough because you're not on all cylinders. But just to be heard and be heard in such a way that you know that they're really listening to everything that you're saying and not mm -hmm. sounding like a hypochondriac and all those other right. things. But one of my frustrations was, as I was going through the early process of healing, was, oh my gosh, with all my training, I'm struggling. I can't imagine what it's like for someone who doesn't have my training. And so I started the autoimmune hour, and it was to not only bring communication skills and how to advocate. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if you're really in the throes of healing, it's important that you have someone who advocates for you. Definitely. Because Definitely. You, you're not going to remember. You're Your not job is to be sick and get better. That, yeah, you know, you absolutely. can't do everything. So let someone help you. Yeah. Absolutely. But then it comes a point where being able to advocate for yourselves. And sometimes that is even having the courage to say, mm, no, that's not going to work for me, and that's okay. Yeah, we were talking about trust your instinct. I mean, and that's so hard to do when people are bombarding you with this is what's this is what's always been done. It's like, right. but you are the expert on yourself. But and she has fascinating guests on there. How can they tune you in? Oh, it's uh, every Friday night on Ohm Times Radio or E Women's Network Radio. E both of those are sponsors. Okay. Every Friday night, seven p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, the okay. <laughs> hour, yes, but we have more than just uh, about communications. Beautiful. Yeah. Like yeah. you coaching people, how to coach yourself, mm -hmm. how to coach others, talk about mindset. We do talk, oh, everything, diet, nutrition, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole yeah, gamut. definitely. It's, it's been so it's, much fun. It's, I, I, I admire you. I like to know where you find your guests, but, <laughs> but you always come up with somebody who's doing something very. I will say innovative. Most of your people are innovative. They're not the traditional route, so well, that makes it interesting. Well, we call ourselves 
thrivers, not survivors. There you go. Right. <laughs> and we like to, you know, I'm, my tribe lo just loves to say, look, you know, who knows you better than yourself? Mm -hmm. And not everybody's going to make the same decision with the same information. Right, Because right. we don't know. You know, we yeah. can't say. And the other thing is, a lot of times in the medical community, we're raised, what I like to say, call it sort of in quotes, the white coat authority. And it's very hard yeah. at some times to say, hmm, you know, that might be wise for someone, but that just won't work for me. And, yeah. and that's, you know, that's kind to say it that way. And it's not combative or anything like that. No, no. It, it could be if the doctor isn't <laughs> willing. <laughs> True. <laughs> but it you know be. what? It, it, sometimes you have to uh, take a stand. So. And learning to find mm. your own tribe of uh, caregivers. I think that's critically important. Yes, the ones yes. You know what a great idea. Yeah. 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 Just your team. And it doesn't mm -hmm. have to always be, you know, part of this hospital. It could be a whole bunch of people who are inputting great ideas. Absolutely. And yeah. sometimes, it's, sometimes it's just friends. Mm -hmm. it, sometimes mm -hmm. you just need to just have someone listen. That's all that it needs. Yep, yep. I love that. All right, let's get to Pinky <laughs> Chenille. <laughs> yeah. Let me hold this lovely book up because tell us, um, tell us how this came about. Well, what there again, that? things are sort of serendipitous in my life. It <laughs> came in the middle of the night in a dream. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> At the time. Um, I knew that I was going to have a granddaughter. She hadn't blessed us here at that mm -hmm. moment yet, but uh, she was coming and uh, in November. And I, in the middle of the night, I woke up about 2 a.m. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but it was like this whole world <laughs> was living in my head. <laughs> and no, <I laughs> it hasn't. <laughs> it was strange. It was one of those, like, am I awake? No, this is, uh, the story's going on in my head. And I started to write it down. and. Then, I, this was actually five years ago, it's been a five year process because I'm a nonfiction author. Oh, I mm -hmm. was a nonfiction <laughs> author, still am. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. But there's a whole learning process to learn fiction. And then children's fiction is uh, a little icing on the cake above that. It's mm -hmm. very different. Because even in fiction, if you're writing adult fiction, there's some suggestions for a word limit, but it's not as constrictive. Like a good children's story is under a thousand words. So how do you tell a really good juicy story <laughs> under <laughs> a thousand words? So there was a lot to learn. But anyway, it, it, with the story, I just started writing it down. And then I learned how to put it into rhyme and prose mm. and all of that, which was so much fun. So it just came out, and I'm really excited. And it's been getting really great feedback because the story is all about the color critters, who are the colors of the rainbow, they get mad at each other. And I find one of the things I work with a lot of adults <laughs> is conflict management. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Teams do have conflict. Yes, yes. And uh -huh. I find that when we teach our youngsters about conflict management and what happens if you're being perceived as mean or someone else is being perceived as mean. And so the story is that the color critters, they all get mad at each other and they hide their colors. And it's up to Pinky Chenille and Princess Adeline to save the day and make everybody happy again and m have the rainbow come back. Yeah. So it's yeah. really fun. The book starts out black and white, and some people are a little shocked by that because they expect it to be full but color. But the illustrations are gorgeous. Yes. But, but, but then when you add color to them, and she does it a great, and then there's a pop, <laughs> and the whole thing <laughs> just is a profusion of colors. Um, it, it, it's great. So what lessons do you think um, well, I'm, I'm thinking adults could use this, especially <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> but <laughs> what lessons are you hoping that, that um, ages three to five pick up from this? To communicate with each other. How mm. to talk about things when someone is mad at each other or something mm. goes wrong on the playground or someone stole my blocks or whatever. How to talk to each other. How to, to, to share with each other that that wasn't nice or that wasn't fair. Mm -hmm. And then how to also receive that too when someone is upset with you because sometimes even if we're not setting out to be mean no I think even at the age of three they can actually decide I'm gonna go take those blocks yes <laughs> absolutely <laughs> Whether she, and I'm gonna go get them back yeah exactly <laughs> yeah exactly but it's really important to understand and be ha able to have those conversations mm -hmm. even at that young age and oftentimes they don't have the full range of language for mm -hmm. it, but as adults, it's really nice. Even if we, we talk at a higher level of language, they do pick it up. 
Yeah, they're just like little sponges. Oh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. shocking to me how quickly they learn. Well, the, the lesson that I learned that I love, because <laughs> I read the book, <laughs> um, was how everyone came together to make it all pretty, you know, at which we're talking about teamwork and, and yeah. everyone's unique in its own way. I'm sure you're not going to sit there and read that to your child, but it, I think it, it, that's the underlying lesson. It's like if we all work together, look at this wonderful, colorful world we'll have. And, I, I have a few adults I'd like to send it to, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But what I love about this, she has coaching questions at the back. Have you ever seen a book like that? Yeah. Uh, give us an example of some of the questions you have. Well, some of the questions are like, what are some things that happen that can be seen as mean or feel mean? Yeah. And that's a, it's a very simple question that you ask a, a group of young kids, three to mm -hmm. five. And they'll all sorts of sharing things. and. Oftentimes you have to prep them with, let's not talk about people in the room, let's just talk very generically. So we could say we're not gonna share any names, we won't <laughs> share any names, because sometimes, like adults too, the little ones, Steve did this, yeah. Yeah, did that, <laughs> exactly, did this. yeah. You know, so we just keep it very generic with the questions. What are some things that, that happen that can be seen as mean or feel mean? So that's a very sort of open, generic mm -hmm. question. And then I also have where, as the parent or teacher, it's this takes me back to my own experience. And you can share a little story of what happened and how you resolved it. And then the kids can learn from those types of things. Or this reminds me of a story in another book. And you mm. can bring in more reading yeah. that way. I'm just a fan of reading to kids. And the wonderful thing I love about kids is they want to hear the story over and over. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I'm always amazed. <laughs> really? You haven't been satiated yet? You got to hear it one more time? Okay. <laughs> but they're always picking up little nuances every time mm. they hear it over and over again. And I love it when it gets to the point where they're reading it to you, even maybe, you know, at three they don't know how to read. Right, But right. they are reading it, it to you, and that's what I love about it. Well, th this is, now we can find this, whoops, I'm, I'm ripping the book apart, sorry. <laughs> we can find this um, on your website, which is at the bottom of the page here, SharonSailor.com. Yes. I believe there's also, I think Pinky has her own website, right? Yeah, PinkyChenille.com. <laughs> yes, you can find that. Go look up how to spell Chenille. I had to do it. <laughs> and, <laughs> and how to say it, actually. And I suspect, because I know there's a new grandchild, yeah. uh, there, there might be another children's book by Sharon Saylor. Is this true? Well, we're working on it. <laughs> There's another Pinky Chenille story coming out. This is Pinky Chenille and the Rainbow Hunters. And uh, the other story coming out is uh, Pinky Chenille and the Sapphire Slippers is under production. Oh, I love it. A I series. Really <laughs> I'm so impressed. <laughs> I was really shocked at how long it takes to write a children's book. You know, <laughs> I, I, a nonfiction, <laughs> the illustrations are pretty simple <laughs> and yeah. things like this. But it, so Sapphire Slippers is coming out. And yes, all of a sudden, with the new grandson, it's, oh my goodness, and we have to invent a whole new world That's for that That's right. <laughs> so uh, I suspect she'll be getting up late at night <laughs> with <laughs> other other people in her head. <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad, but... I love it. I love it. I, I'm hoping it's not a sign of something. <laughs> oh, she went crazy, but she wrote good books. <laughs> Sharon Saylor, you are always welcome here. I always learn something. This time I found out how you became a body image expert. I love that. <laughs> so uh, you are always welcome on the coaching Thank game you. or whatever else I'm doing. Thank you so much for coming from Oregon. <laughs> I know it you. wasn't just for me, but thank you for coming and being on the show. It was fascinating. Oh, it's a delight as always. Thank, Thank you. you.